The Galaxy Z Fold 5 has been with us for 10 months now, so how has it held up? And with the price drops and feature additions, is it worth buying now more than ever before? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is one of those phones that most people, myself included, don't tend to think about too much because at almost two grand, it's far beyond our reach, especially as you tend to get more functionality and more quality in the important areas with cheaper slab style phones like Samsung's own Galaxy S24 Ultra, like the cameras, the display brightness and sharpness, the battery life and robustness in weatherproofing. To a lot of people, having that big internal display just isn't worth the compromise because the Z Fold series up until now has felt like a massive compromise. And when you're paying $1,800 MSRP, I don't think there's much room for that. I've seen it available on Amazon for $1,500, but the Fold 5 is still full price on Best Buy and Samsung, albeit with some pretty good trade-in deals. So overall, the price really hasn't changed all that much market-wide. You're still paying a lot for an almost year-old phone. What has changed is the software, where those super cool AI features we saw Samsung introduce with the Galaxy S24 series have been brought over, like the on-the-fly translation, Galaxy AI photo augmentation, and Circle to Search, the latter of which is one I actually use quite a lot. These things aren't there to add to a spec sheet or to be used as a marketing ploy, they're actually quite useful features and add functionality to the device, which it could really do with since the hardware, at least in my eyes, has been a little meh ever since OnePlus launched its Open. The Open not only has the better pricing right now, $1,400 on their own website, but it's bigger, higher resolution, better implemented displays, it's increased battery life, and in my opinion, the nicer build and form factor, it's just a solid step ahead of the Z Fold 5. Which, to be fair, does have the better IPX8 weatherproofing, wireless charging, and stiffer hinge, but in my opinion, just doesn't feel like the same level of package that you get with the OnePlus Open. And the battery life isn't bad, it lasts me a full day with no dramas, but it's not at the level of the Open once again. My Z Fold 5 unit has a really solid hinge and doesn't creak or crack. The displays are also in fantastic condition and the phone still feels like new. I haven't had this nearly as long as my Z Flip 5 unit though, so there's been much less chance of any damage occurring. The external hardware as a whole has held up pretty well and so has what's found inside. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and 12 gigs of RAM might be a year old at this point, but you really wouldn't know it by using it. You can play games on here with no dramas, whether it be on the outside or inside displays. Though I must say the smaller panel is just too thin for any kind of good gaming experience in my opinion. And with that bigger panel, you do get the crease down the middle, which some really might hate, but I honestly never really worried about it. What did bother me though, was after using the OnePlus Open and moving over to the Z Fold 5, the anti-glare coating on that inner display just isn't nearly as good as what you'll find on the former's. So there are a lot of reflections in direct sunlight. Thankfully though, the panel is bright enough to deal well with this sun-kissed environment. It's sharp, it's fast at 120 hertz, and feels a real treat when you do get to make use of it. Something like a big article or a video game, or even YouTube content. My wonderful colleague Jaime has found using the separately sold S Pen to be a delight with his Fold 5 unit, and though I don't have one of those to hand personally, I can certainly see why he enjoys it so much. Samsung has done a great job in its software to make use of that added screen real estate with the split screen features and the dock at the bottom. And in games, that bigger inner display really does come into its own. I can see why people choose to go the foldable route for playing their favourite titles, because what's better than a big 120Hz OLED display? Thankfully, the little things like the side-mounted fingerprint scanner, the speaker quality, the punch hole sizing, and the haptics are all as good as they really should be in my opinion. It's the small details that make a premium phone really feel its worth, and you already know how much I like the trusty capacitive fingerprint readers. The Z Fold 5 is due another three years of OS updates with a further year of security patches, taking the device well into 2028 in terms of support, which given the device is already a year old, isn't half bad. Especially since we've already had a big update on here with the aforementioned AI introductions that have greatly impacted the Fold 5's value proposition. 
specifically when it comes to the camera system. Now you think a phone that costs this much would have a tremendous camera setup and that's really not the case. For those who have forgotten the Z Fold 5's camera chops, I don't blame you. We have a 50 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 10 megapixel three times telephoto and a 10 megapixel selfie shooter with a four megapixel internal selfie shooter. To touch on selfies for a second, you do of course have heaps of options for which cameras to take the selfies with but I'm not the biggest fan of that in-display unit for the internal selfie camera. I'd rather a proper punch hole here because it just spits out dull and washed out selfies, but the other cameras of course do a great job, so thankfully there are backups. And portrait mode on here looks pretty decent as well with a fairly accurate cutout. The cameras are pretty good as a whole, almost impressive, but they do fall behind what we're seeing on the slab style devices. And given it's the same hardware as last year, it does feel like a bit of a misstep. A year later these cameras are just fine but you have to consider that they're basically two years old now and the OnePlus Open sporting a bigger proper periscope zoom and better sensors across the board makes the Fold 5 stack just feel not quite good enough for the price point. In the telephoto and ultra wide photo specifically you'll notice almost sharper looking details on the surface which is a result of the sharpening processing filters and not actually the sharpness. The main camera is clearly the star of the show here with superior performance across the board. Pinching in, you do feel the lack of proper telephoto cameras on this device. Anywhere beyond five times really starts to break down pretty badly, partly due to the small low resolution sensor combined with a lens that really just cannot stretch that far. Strangely, in video, this $1,800 phone won't record in Ultra HD 4K 60fps with its ultra wide camera, which is a limitation we're used to seeing on $500 devices, not those that cost almost four times that price. The main camera video comes out looking pretty good actually. The 8K footage has a little bit of that artificially sharpened look that I think many phones do produce in the 8K mode, so I'd just steer clear of it. Though the Ultra HD 30p and 60p from the main cameras is really solid with nice punchy colours and decent contrast despite the HDR processing going on in the background. Overall the Fold 5's cameras are good in a vacuum but when you consider the price and the fact that the OnePlus Open and Pixel Fold exist it's hard to justify a cut down camera cluster for an almost two grand phone. And that's kind of the sentiment on this phone as a whole really. The Z Fold 5 was already not a huge leap from its predecessor and since it's not the only foldable in the space it needs to do more for me to consider recommending it at the $1500 to $1800 mark. The OnePlus Open is the way better phone in my opinion in pretty much every way and is my go-to foldable recommendation but if you really want the S Pen and Galaxy AI then wait for the Fold 6 and see how that is. Or if you really want the Fold 5, maybe try and pick one up on a deal somewhere because it's definitely not worth its MSRP. The $1,500 that you can find it at in some stores combined with the added AI features do help its value proposition. And I'd call it a better deal now than ever before. But I'd have to guess that Samsung will be upgrading this camera system in its successor. And that is reason alone to consider the new model over this one. Let me know what you think about foldables like this in the comments. Are you a Z Fold 5 owner? And are these AI additions a big pull for you? I think they help make the price tag a little easier to digest. But anyway, hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content and never want to miss another upload. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.